before it lets out. It's out. Well, John Bush is going to come down and speak. I, I don't know where he's going. Where he went. He's going to speak. Can't do this, but I'm going to. John Bush is going to speak here. He's with the Liberty Beats and news media organization. She just said that. Are you serious? What'd she say? The judge just hold said. Hold on, let me get my phone. Are you, do you mind if I put it on? Okay, hold on. And then, the, so like people being informed. They specifically have, uh, said like there's people out there trying to talk to jurors and do this and that. And she's, it was like her last matter of business before we all walked out. Leave the tank ring to us. Okay. John's gonna be speaking. Yeah, John if should be walking out. Here. I was just telling them what the judge just said. What's Excellent. her name? Yeah. Catherine Forrest. Judge. She specifically mentioned people outside passing out information. I mean, they did it all day, but then at the end she, she said, there's the matter, there's one more matter that we have to deal with. There's people outside that are passing out flyers to jurors or potential jurors, people that they think might be jurors, and if that continues by tomorrow morning at 9.30 when we restart, then we're gonna make the jury anonymous and bring them in, like hidden location, basically sequester the jury. And she said, and Good. then, well then Ross's uh, defense team said aloud, he's like, okay, well let me just say this aloud so the press will hopefully report this to those people. You're not helping, you're hurting our, his case. That's what he just said. Who said this? Ross's lawyer just said that passing out flyers in front of the courthouse is hurting the case because the, the judge just said if it's still happening by tomorrow morning at 9.30, they're gonna make the jury anonymous and basically sequester them, bring them in through private locations and all kinds of shit. Fascinating, is there any precedent for that? Not that I know, but she definitely made it clear that, and his lawyer made it clear that they didn't think it was helping and that I guess they don't want jurors, people to be informed about their rights as jurors. All right. Thank you. I'm disappointed by that news. Yeah, very. Yeah, we could actually tell you that because I was planning on being here all week. Well, I think it's a jury notification flyer. Targeting the jurors is the problem. The signage might be course, also, but. If anybody is wondering who the fucking mole was, he was in there today. He was a DHS agent. He gave his full name. I've written down. He's serious. Who was? Are you talking about Jared? The guy who was. Jared. Yeah, DHS Jared. Something. I can't remember his last name, but he was basically he was an admin. He was part of the administrative team of Silk Road for over two years. He's, he's a DHS and Customs and Border Patrol agent. Who they started get. He said they started getting all these shipments of drugs through Chicago Hair International traced them to Silk Road, then he became part of the admin team for two years and infiltrated it, and he is the Sirius who people suspected was the mole that led, supposedly led them to Ross. Wait a second, that's not what I understood. That's what he said, they, he said that he was Sirius. He asked him what account, what name he used on him, and he said that he was oh, Sirius. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. But basically that guy, Jared, I can't remember his last name, but he's a DHS it's agent, Customs and Border Patrol. Hold on a he said basically he's career law enforcement. And he said that he's been following the Silk Road and infiltrating it for since uh, 2011 till Ross's arrest. Jared Duigan. Yeah. Jared Duigan is yeah. the mole you yeah. said? Yeah, apparently. Yeah. So he's his... Um, his handle was H S I Homeland Security Investigator. Yeah, that was his specific. Uh, and he was a special agent through the um, through the Customs Office in uh, at Chicago O'Hare Airport. Yes. Uh, what is the update on hearing the press briefing from John Bush? Are you in communication with him? John was just getting his stuff. He was supposed to be walking out. He might be on the other at the other exit, but I told him I was going on this way. He should be walking over here. Okay. Yeah, we all just. I guess the question is. is in that or was he trying to? He seemed to? pretty frustrated because he's because basically the judge brings up anonymous yeah, juries and she's like I know whatever the lawyer's name Ross's lawyer's like I know you don't want to do this anonymous jury what thing. And I told what would be the downside of an anonymous jury? Well I guess then they they what she said specifically was that they would bring them into a secret location so, to make sure nobody and I don't know if that means that they would then pick a whole new jury. Like, I don't know they didn't really go into detail but she just said if by tomorrow at 9 30, 9 in the morning with those people are out there then when we start at 9 30 we're getting an update. Is he related to bad news? Yeah, we're Well, do you think, so do you think we shouldn't do it anymore? I think Basically, we should talk to Linda. We're still out here tomorrow, they're going to make the jury's. You know, because it, it, I know nobody it, wants to hurt Ross's well, case, you know. Uh, excuse me for a second. Oh. Uh, Seeing yourself and give us a, a quick briefing on uh, what's going on, John? Sure.
Hi, my name is John Bush. I'm the editor in chief of the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and Access updates. And I've uh, been here at the trial since early this morning. We started off slow with the uh, more dire the jury selection. Uh, several, several of the jurors were uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security, family, NYPD. They were asked if they would be biased. And they said no, which is uh, unlikely in my opinion. Uh, the, so they picked 12 jurors, continued on, and uh, took a break, got back up. Unfortunately, we had to go over to the spillover room, and uh, at that point we watched the state and the defense's uh, opening statements, and the state uh, painstakingly presented a case that Ross Ulbricht is in fact Dread Pirate Roberts, the administrator of uh, Silk Road website, online black marketplace. Uh, he went over a series of evidence that allegedly would link Ross Ulbrich to, uh, to the website. Among them, uh, they meticulously talked about uh, when he was arrested in a public library in San Francisco with a computer that was open, logged into Silk Road in a, an administrative section called Mastermind. Spoke of how the person that he was talking with on a chat at the time of his arrest, uh, who he believed to be his employee, one of his employees, uh, was in fact an undercover agent. And the undercover FBI agent was actually in communication with the plainclothes undercover FBI agents that were following uh, Ross around. And uh, he confirmed with the plainclothes undercovers that he was talking to at that time. They went, moved in, and arrested him. Uh, before he can close the computer. Apparently it gets encrypted when it closes. I don't know where I got that tidbit from. Maybe that's not true. Uh, maybe I got it online. Don't believe anything you read online unless it's from libertybeat.com, of course. Uh, and so uh, they got to the website. That chat was open, all the administrative stuff. Uh, that's when they arrested him. Silk Road was closed down the next day. Um, they, uh, on several occasions, tried to make it appear as though uh, Ross in his role as DPR profited immensely and they went over each of the activities that were taking place. Uh, for example, allegedly Ross as DPR uh, assisted people in getting uh, fraudulent documents, fraudulent passports, assisted them in the sell, selling of uh, narcotics and repeatedly he continued the meme that Ross was profiting from this and that none of this would be able to happen without Ross. And, of course, he's doing that in order to help uh, prove these uh, conspiracy charges that Ross, uh, that this wouldn't have happened without Ross. Ross was an integral part. Whether he was actually the one that was selling the drugs or not, uh, he's still going to be brought up on the conspiracy charges. But they also went on to say that in Ross's journal, which was found on his computer, uh, he actually started the Silk Road. The first thing he did was grow mushrooms in a private cabin outside of Austin, Texas. Uh, and that was the first product offered on Silk Road. So. Uh, they had all this evidence. Uh, they even said uh, Ross had an old friend who was a computer programmer that he was uh, reaching out to in order to get advice on how to move forward with the top secret project. His friend said, I'm not going to help you anymore unless you tell me what it is. He came clean as to what it is. Allegedly, this is what the prosecution is saying. And uh, the friend is going to be one of the witnesses in the case. Uh, he also spoke of a former employee, I believe, that's going to be a witness. No, I'm sorry, a former dealer on Silk Road that's also going to be a witness um, in exchange for lesser charges, I imagine. Uh, so he went up there and painted this picture. He repeated again the same ideas that Ross is profiting from this, um, that he's some sort of big drug lord. Uh, he said this is the type of activities that drug lords do repeatedly. Uh, again, they're trying to get him on this continuing of a criminal enterprise charge, which they call a kingpin charge, which is normally reserved for drug lords and mafiosos. Then the defense came up, and I was curious how the defense was going to respond to all of these allegations. And so it appears that the angle the defense will be using is that the true Dread Pirate Roberts became aware that he was going to be, uh, or he or they were going to be uh, arrested and that the government was watching them, and they essentially they set up Ross as the fall guy. The defense did in fact admit that Ross is the one who originally came up with the idea for Silk Road and they went on to say that he started it but after a couple months he realized that it was too stressful they said so he walked away from it. So uh, 
As I said, I was unsure how the defense was going to proceed, if they were going to try to avoid Ross even being associated with Dread Pirate Roberts and say he has nothing to do with it, but they came forward saying that Ross came up with the idea and then backed away from it. And again, the narrative that the defense will be portraying over the next several weeks is that Ross was uh, Ross was the fall guy and the true Dread Pirate Roberts remains to be unseen. The defense also spent a lot of time uh, speaking of uh, how uh, the 18 million dollars that Ross was caught with on his computer is but a small fraction of the money, the profit that would have come from Dread Pirate Roberts and he continuously asked where in fact is this money. It's still out there with Dread Pirate Roberts. Dread Pirate Roberts is still on the loose. Uh, and then after the opening statements there was a break and at that point we heard from a special agent with the Department of Homeland Security Investigative Division uh, who uh, while stationed at Chicago O'Hare, continuously saw uh, packages that were coming through from Amsterdam, and uh, they first found a few that looked like commercial packages. Uh, I should add that that they, was a uh, big thing, actually, was the commercial addresses and the um, the uh, the idea. And I think that that goes to talking about the professionalism of it and everything, and that this is just that this is a once again a kingpin operation. I mean, they kept saying that he is a he's a drug lord, a kingpin. Yeah. So yeah, the fact that they were used on, uh, they used uh, labels that weren't handwritten <laughs> was a real big deal and that was how they were able to identify it and that the first ones were, it was Molly or something or um, Ecstasy, MDMA that they came across, like yeah. the three pills. Yeah. Ecstasy pills. And uh, the defense also in their opening statement uh, continuously repeated the idea that if if Ross Ulbricht was in fact this drug kingpin, why would he have been so silly as to have a, all this information on his computer? Uh, why would there be a, a note that he threw in a trash can uh, in his apartment? And uh, so this uh, special agent continuously saw these packages coming from Amsterdam, and then more of them started to come through and trickle in, and he started looking into it, and uh, he, start, he learned of the Silk Road, he logged into the Silk Road, and he was able to match one of the users with the packages and the same drugs, same pictures of the drugs. And uh, he eventually set up like five or six different uh, fake accounts on the Silk Road. He even uh, administered several accounts from other users. And he even, after uh, arresting one of the employees, he took over the one of Ross's uh, dozen or 10 employees I'm sorry, one of Dread Pirate Roberts' employees, we, we still don't know if Dread Pirate Roberts is Ross Ulbricht, uh, he took a, over the site and he act, ended up operating it as an employee until the day that Ross Ulbricht was arrested. Uh, and then he continued to go on and even showed a picture, uh, evidence that had just a, a stacks and stacks of boxes in a storage room which contained these envelopes from these drugs. Uh, among them were heroin, cocaine, MDMA, ecstasy. The pictures, yes. There's just stacks and stacks of boxes that are in a vault at Chicago O'Hare. Uh, so it sounds like this will be the this is the defend the prosecution's first witness uh, who has an intimate knowledge. Oh, they also went through a demonstration of Tor. He had a screenshot recording on his computer of how the Onion Router works, which is essentially a an alternative web browser that masks users' IP addresses and allows them to remain anonymous on the internet and talk about how it's beneficial for law enforcement to know who's using the computers and he showed how you can track an IP address on the normal web and he went on tour and showed that the IP address is scrambled and it was actually in Germany. Uh, so I think the prosecution is slowly but surely educating the jury about what this technology is all about and then they're demonstrating why Dread Pirate Roberts would want to use this technology in order to hide his identity to further the fact that he knew that he was doing something wrong, I imagine. And uh, that's where we are today. Um, the judge was irritated that there's jury nullification pamphlets being passed around outside. Uh, and the defense attorney was also irritated. He wanted to put it on the record that, uh, that he doesn't condone that and he actually thinks that it's hurting Ross's defense. Uh, they talked about whether or not they're going to have to have an anonymous jury, which I guess means that they scurry the jury, scurry the jury in a hurry, uh, and they rush them out through a back door or something so they can't uh, gain access. And they said we're going to judge based on what happens tomorrow morning if they're approached by people with these pamphlets. They didn't say jury notification pamphlets. Then uh, they might have to switch to an anonymous jury. So that's having an impact uh, one way or the other. Uh, and it's being discussed in the courtroom on several occasions today. Will you take questions? Sure. Do we have any questions from the World Crypto Network? Yeah. Could we have Grace Valley?